a father of two young children, a school teacher, a mother and teenage daughter. These are the faces of organ donation. The people who donate and who receive organ tissues are not statistics or medical stories. They are everyone we know, everyone we love, and at any moment they can be each one of us. You can make a difference in the lives of others by making a decision to become an organ donor, tissue, or bone marrow donor by donating blood or donating your body for medical and medical <coughs> research and education. Organ donation is defined as removal of tissue of the body from a person who had recently died or from a living donor for the purpose of transplanting. As of November 12, 2008, 100,559 men, women, and children enough to populate a small city or on the waiting list for organ donation, according to the Organ Procurement and Transport Plant Network. Every 13 minutes, a new name is added to the National Transplant and Waiting List. <clears throat> What's more disturbing is that the average of 17 people die each day because there are not enough organ donors. And on an average day, about 77 people receive organ transplants. But thousands more never get the call from the transplant center saying a suitable donor organ and a second chance of life has been found. That second chance began in 1902 at the Vienna Medical School in Austria when the first successful experiment kidney transplant were performed with animals. In 1954, the first successful kidney transplant was performed on 23-year-old identical twin by Dr. Joseph E. Murray at Brigham Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. The first instance of a transplant recipient giving birth occurred in 1958. In 1961, azathioprine, a reject inhibitor, became available and increased the odds of successful organ transplant when used with steroids. The first deceased donor kidney transplant was performed in 1962. In 1966, the first simultaneous kidney pancreas transplant was performed. In 1967, brought forth the first successful liver transplant. In 1968, saw the first successful isolated pancreas transplant and the first successful heart transplant. It wasn't until 1981 when the first heart-lung transplant was performed. The first successful single-lung transplant happened in 1983, accompanied by the introduction of cyclosporin, the anti-rejection medicine used today. The first double-lung transplant was performed in 1986, and in 1987, the first intestinal transplant. In 1989, the first living donor liver transplant, and in the 1990s, we saw the first living donor lung transplant and the first adult adult living donor liver transplant. Wouldn't you want to be part of a history or a medical miracle? It can be hard to think about what's going to happen to your body after you die, let alone donating your organs and tissue. But being an organ donor is a generous and worthwhile decision that can be a lifesaver. Understanding organ donation can make you feel better about your choices. If you delayed your decision to be a donor because of possible inadequate information, here are some of the common organ donation myths and concerns. <clears throat> Myth number one, if I agree to donate my organs, my doctor or the emergency room staff won't work as hard to save my life. They'll remove my organs as soon as possible to save someone else. In reality, when you go to the hospital for treatment, doctors focus on saving your life, not somebody else's. You'll be seen by a doctor who especially most closely matches your particular emergency. The doctor in charge of your care has nothing to do with transplants. Myth number two, maybe I won't be really dead when they sign my death certificate. It'll be too late for me. They have taken my organs for transplant. I might have otherwise recovered. <laughs> in reality, although it's a powerful topic for the tabloid, People don't start to wiggle their toe after they're declared dead. In fact, people who agreed to organ donation are given more tests to determine that they are truly dead than those who haven't agreed to organ donation. Myth number three, organ donation against my religion. In reality, organ donation is consistent with the beliefs of most religions. This includes Catholic, Protestant, Islam, and most branches of Judaism. If you are unsure or uncomfortable with your faith, position, or donation, ask a member of your clergy. Another option is to check the federal website, organdonor.gov, which provides religious views on organ donation. Myth number four. I'm under 18. I'm too young to make this decision. And in reality, that's true in a legal sense, but your parents can authorize this decision. You can express to your parents your wish to donate. 
and your parents can give the consent knowing that that's what you wanted. Children too are in need of organ transplants and they usually <coughs> need organs smaller than, than an adult can provide. Myth number five, I want my loved one to have an open casket funeral. That can't happen if his or her organs have been donated. In reality, organ and tissue donation, donation doesn't interfere with having an open casket funeral. The donor's body is closed for burial, so there are no visible signs of organ or tissue donation. For eye donation, an artificial eye is inserted, the lids are closed, and no one can tell any difference. For bone donation, a rod is inserted where the bone is removed. With skin donation, a very thin layer, similar to a sunburn pill, is taken from the donor's back because the donor is clothed and lying on his back or her back in the casket. No one can see any difference. <coughs> Myth number six. I would like to donate my kidney now rather than wait to my death, but I hear you can't do that unless you're a close family member or someone in need. In reality, if you decide to become a living donor, you will undergo a step to question sure that you are aware of the risk and make sure you are giving away a kidney out of pure goodwill and not return for financial gain. You will also undergo testing and determine that your kidneys are in good shape and that you can live a healthy life with one kidney. <coughs> You can also donate blood or bone marrow in your lifetime. Contact your local chapter of American Red Cross for details. Do your part to help save lives. Get started. Register with your state donor registry. Designate your decision on your driver's license. Sign a donor card. And as an organ donor, you can help save or improve the lives of more than 50 people. Organ and tissue donation is all about donating lives. Organ and tissue transplants offer patients a new chance for healthy, productive, normal lives and return them to their family, friends, and communities. Only you have the power to save lives. It's about living. It's about life. Because when you do nothing, everybody loses. In the word of Albert Einstein, only life for others is worth living. Also, if you're interested in filling out a donor card, make sure you fill out correct information. Fill out everything completely. It's got a block for you to check which organs you want to check or donate. If you want to donate everything to science, check one block only. Make sure you sign your name or parent or guardian signature. Have a witness. One signature must be 18 or older. You need a witness two signature must be 18 or older. Sign and date it and then send it in.